On this video, we are gonna be installing this rockin' wood that I had gotten, and I'm gonna talk about it, and we're gonna get that installed here in this section. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm Kelly. And this is our This adventure. is our adventures. This video is sponsored by Rockin' Wood. They uh, gave me this product to try for me to do an install video. I had researched a lot of different woods and I reached out to Rockin' Wood because I was very impressed with their prices. I felt like they were probably the most economical one that I had found. I reached out to ask if they would give us some wood so that we could do a video for y'all and they did. They gave me enough to do this little section right here and you know I'm so excited and so impressed just by seeing the wood. We have a spot behind the TV in the house and I'm gonna buy my own to put there because I really like this product because I'm gonna go buy some my own to do in the house. Rockin' Wood is a family-run business <laughs> Rockin' Wood is a family-run U.S. business that's been in business since 2013. They salvage local wood and save over five tons a week that would be normally discarded. They recycle 99% of the material that they use in their product is recycled. So this is good for the environment. And they're out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. This stuff is great for the camper because it is super lightweight and super thin. It does have the adhesive on there. This product is not something that you're going to remove later. This is industrial professional strength adhesive. Won't come off. If they recommend that if it was on a wall that you wanted to take it off, that you need to put up some kind of Luon and put this on the Luon because this won't come off of the woods. What we're going to do, we're going to put that up in this little section here. We're going to clean this area really good. I'm going to use some Clorox wipes, wipe it down, and then let it dry. And the only things that I think I'm going to need for this project is I have a chop saw outside and I have a jigsaw to cut to go around the windows, and that's gonna be it. <gasps> all right, let's get this all cleaned up and wiped up and let it start drying. We'll start putting up some wood. I'm just using some Clorox wipes to clean this area really good to make sure that there's no residue or anything at, like from the wallpaper that I had up there. All right, I got that wiped down real good and we're gonna let this just air dry and then we will start installing this wood. Now that everything is dry, we will start on the back wall and we will do that down and then we'll do the side walls butted back into it so that way it gives us a better clean edge. This wood has like really pretty patina on it and it just looks really neat. But I don't want all the same like pieces so I'm grabbing like a bunch and laying them out so that when I put them up there, a good random look. So to install this, we have prepped our wall by just cleaning it and making sure. Then we're gonna peel off the strips and then we're just gonna put it up. And once this sticks, it stays. So there is no adjusting. So you've got to make sure that you have it where you need it to be. And for me, I'm gonna push it up against the wall and then lower it down. And then just press it on on there really good. Now we did a whole piece here and then I'm going to cut because I don't think this. Oh gosh, this is really going to be that way. I'm not going to have to cut anything because it comes with long pieces and short pieces and look I can put this piece like all the way up against there. It leaves a little bit of a gap but we're gonna have the other pieces going back against it. So you have this here, and then that's gonna cover up that, and you're never even gonna see that there's an itty bitty gap right there. Yes, exciting. 
gonna go ahead and stick this one up. So I want this one to be all the way up against there and it's a little bit different than there. All right. You want it to have alternating. You don't want all your lines lined up together. So now we're gonna take another piece, a long piece, and we're gonna go from that side this way. Peel this off. All right, start to come together. It's gonna look really cool. sure that this is pushed up against there. And then let's see. This wood has some great character to it. It's got like little nail holes in it that you can see through it. And I think it's really pretty. All right, we're just gonna keep alternating until we get down. Now, what I am seeing on these a little bit, and it's just because it's old wood, some of them are kind of bowed a little bit. So what you're gonna wanna do is like drop it how I'm doing that. And then I see which side's gonna wanna be down a little bit more. I'm attaching the one side that fits good and then the other side, I'm making sure that I don't glue it yet until I can push it up into place. I'll show you on this one. So what you're doing is you're pushing it all the way up against there and see it, it rocks just a little bit. So I'm doing that, so I'm gonna let that go ahead and be touching. And then I'm gonna take this piece and push it up where I need it to be, and then push it in. And then it holds in good and keeps it flush. All right, I'm gonna go grab some more wood, bring it up here and keep going. They come in little bundles like this, and it's just got all different sizes in there. And you want to make sure you dry, I mean, dry it. You want to make sure you put everything up there before you peel the tape off so that you can make sure that it matches and looks good and then take your tape off and put it back up. too I've seen about this wood is because it has like a bunch of natural holes in them they've covered it up with black so that way it's it's black behind it so you don't actually see the back behind because there's like a piece of it here and a piece here and I like that because that that way you know it's natural wood so it's gonna have holes and nail holes and and everything in it stuff is sticking really good. They also make this in white, like a white wash. So you could do it in the gray or the white wash. Um, I liked both of them and I just told them to surprise me and this is the one that I got. And actually after I told them to surprise me, I thought, oh, I wish I'd have told them to do the gray because that was like my favorite because that's my barn theme look. Because I really like barn theme more than I do farmhouse. Well, all right. <sighs> Takes me a while to get things done because I had the house listed this morning. I got an offer on it, so I had to go do that. Now I've got to go write an offer on another house that somebody else wants to write an offer on. So I am. Oh, pause. Go oh, Go write an offer. My last piece, this one up really easy up here, just because I didn't have to cut anything. <laughs> but the sides, I'm gonna have to do a lot of cutting. Oh, I'm scared. All right, that should be as high as I need to go because the mattress that I'm getting, and so it should cover, should cover about right in there. That's all done. I'm really loving this. 
not sure that I'm gonna put that headboard back up. I think it's so pretty and I'd hate to cover it up. I know my pillows will cover it enough and yeah, I don't know that I'm gonna put the headboard back up. All right, let's start doing the sides now. Let's look and see how I wanna do these side pieces. I gotta see where I wanna stop it at and I really think that I wanna stop it at this right here, that piece, because you put it on top of that and it's gonna be, so that's where I need to stop it. Put up this. Okay, and now we gotta go get to use the chop saw. Yep, that looks really good like that. That's gonna fit. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut another one this same size while I have it marked. That way they match. Perfect. And the next ones I'm gonna have to cut with a jigsaw. Not my favorite. get those other little pieces that I cut because I can use those on the sides. So to make this angled cut, I decided I'm going to make a template with a piece of paper and then put that onto the board. That way I can get that cut just right. Draw it on this piece. All right, I'm gonna go use the jigsaw. You missed me <laughs> jigsawing this out. For whatever reason, it didn't record. But anyway, I just took that and cut it. Let's see. I've got it perfect all the way up till about right in here and I cut like a little bit on the left side of my line but you would rather it be cut too long so that way we can just go back and trim a little bit more off until it's perfect. We don't want to cut it too short because we can't obviously head back to wood. But what I'm gonna do because this is a great template for the other side I'm gonna go ahead and cut it yeah i'm just gonna cut this piece because this piece is a little shorter so i'm gonna once i get this side perfect i'm gonna take this flip it upside down and mark it on this one and cut this one and then come look at it and then measure it how long it needs to be that way i can do both of these with one template wow look how perfect that is i mean it is in there all right now i'm gonna duplicate it and cut one for the other side and then we just got some straight cuts again. That's going to be perfect. Now I just need to cut it that way and I'll install these pieces. This is the part, that, I mean like if you just wanted to do this back wall, you could do that and not have to worry about doing all this cutting. But I wanted to do my side walls. I think it's going to look cool. And uh, I decided I want to do the cutting. And like I said, make sure you always put your piece up there, even if you know that it's right, just to make sure it's right before you peel off, because you don't want to waste a piece. You can see like there's a little bit of rusted, ed rusted edge, but you're gonna have my blinds on here, so you may not see this, but what I'm gonna do after I hang my blinds, I can mix a little bit of gray paint and water and then put that on this, and you'll never even see those raw edges. All right, keep it going. Man, let me show you something right here. The only thing that I'm not a fan of looking at it from this angle is you can see the end of this wood and it's just because this lip is not big enough. 
So I'm probably gonna end up finding some kind of a little strip of wood or something that I can put down through here to cover that raw edge, just because it's natural wood and it's kind of waving. And if I can get like a little piece of something, I can just put it down through there. I'm gonna figure that out, see? But that's, you gotta be flexible when you're doing a remodel because things will happen and you're like, hmm, how did that happen? Or how can I fix that? I'm getting my exercise running in and out. This really is going pretty quick because I'm not having to cut, but just straight cuts. Look, I just did what I said not to do. I took that off. I wasn't thinking. I just stuck it out there real quick. Oh yeah, that works. That don't work. That'll be a over there piece. Mark that all the way down. Okay. All right, go jigsaw that out. And then that'll be it on that side. So we'll go ahead and take a piece. And whoops, knocked you out, didn't I? And jigsaw that out. Gonna be the start of my mark. So if you see what I'm doing here, this is my template and I marked where that last piece of wood was. And so my template, so I'm marking that on this side. And then I marked where the piece of the side starts right here on both of these and then I can just flip this over and line that up as well then mark that on there and then I'm just going to draw a line between these two and then just jigsaw that out and that should work we hope worked out good <laughs> please fit all right so I'm just a little high on the bottom right here and I'm gonna go trim that down a little bit more and then hopefully it looks like it should fit in there really good oh, it needs just a little more cut off of the bottom so that can kind of go up so I hate to waste this piece of wood, but this, and I know I'm not gonna get it really perfect, but I think I can do better than what I just did then. So I'm gonna cut another piece and then I'm gonna see which one fits better. I still boo-booed it a little bit there, but I'm okay with it. I'll, uh, when I come in and paint the gray, I just, I'll have to make it work. That's just a really hard cut to get. You know what? It's rustic farmhouse. <laughs> now we're gonna go to the other side and then we'll be finished with this project. This part of the project. And I got a mess to clean up. Woo! ahead and busted out finishing up this side. I'm really in love with how this looks. I've got some trim that I'm going to put on the front edge of this and I, I think this project's going to be done. Well, I've got to do that and then I need to go get a sanding block and mix up a little bit of stain paint and finish it up. Um, but yeah, it's not going to take me much longer. So I have a sanding block and I'm going to take it and just rub it over all these edges kind of get it with the loose wood. That way there's no splinters or anything. So I don't have to really do this edge because I'm putting that wood up. I need to measure and cut my side pieces. So I found this little cap mold. It has like a little groove on it. So that way it's gonna go like right here. And 
See? It's going to cover up that edge. And then I'm going to paint it, stain it with my gray wash. I'm going to go find some little nails to put it up with. All right. Let's go uh, nail this other piece in on the other side, and then I'll just stain everything, and we'll be done. So I'm making me like a little little bit of gray stain. I've just taken some regular gray acrylic paint and put it in some water and mixed it up and made it sloopy. Made it sloopy, sloopy, sloopy. And then uh, I'm just gonna use this to, to stain the ends of the wood. Then I'll take my foam brush and get some of this gray paint and then just put it in this end and then I'll just wipe it off of the black because I don't need it on the black. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's staining the, the wood back the way that it was. See, now it fixed it and then I'm gonna do my trim, paint it or, sta or stain it because it's kind of like a stain with the same thing. I'm gonna do this other side and uh, I'll meet you back over there. Well, I have to say, I absolutely love how this project turned out. Thank you for Rockin' Wood for sponsoring this video. And I will put a link in the description box below to uh, how to order theirs online. Like I said, they have been amazing. Super nice, super responsive got the product out to us really quick. Now, I wanna kinda go over a little bit more in detail about installing this. You do want to wipe down your walls. They suggest just using like a damp rag, but I did use some Clorox wipes just to make sure because I had the wallpaper up there before and I wanted to make sure if there was any sticky residue, it was gone. This is not something that's peel and stick and that you're gonna take off. This is permanent. Once you put it up, it's not coming down. So just keep that in mind that this is gonna be something that you won't just take down like wallpaper. And I knew that going in and I'm glad. This is a super lightweight product. It's reclaimed wood. It's 90, they use 99% reclaimed wood to make this product. It's perfect for the RV because it is lightweight. So you're not adding any kind of really crazy weight. It is natural wood and it does have knots in it. It has imperfections in it. They're like, you know, they're not perfect, but that's the coolness of the fact that they are rustic looking wood. So when you get ready to lay out your wall, there's going to be like short pieces, long pieces. I kind of pulled and like went like dark light, dark light, just so that all the dark didn't end up being in one place and all the light ended up being in another place and you wanna stagger all your seams. I ended up just going from back and forth because I didn't have to cut anything, which I thought ended up being perfect. If I wanted to cut, in actuality, I probably should have cut and moved, but I was okay with that look. But if you're gonna do it on a longer run wall, stagger your seams more out, just because of this installation and <sighs> battery died right there at the end. Um, where was I at? Talking about, I think, staggering your things. I don't remember now. Ah! Now, because I was in the camper and I wasn't doing a big space, I used my ceiling as my level. But if you were, like, doing it in a home installation, you may want to try to get you a level line at the very top if you're going to put, like, some trim molding or something and then start from there. I just used my ceiling as a level line. I am so impressed. This was so easy to cut. I used a miter saw so I could get straight cuts every time. I mean, you could use a skill saw, but a miter saw would just be much better. And then for my curved uh, sections, I used a jigsaw. It cut really easy. This whole project took me all day, but that's because I was videoing it, writing offers, getting offers accepted. It just took me forever and I had to go show a house. It's like, it wouldn't have probably taken me, if I'd have just got in here and got on it, I probably could have had this whole project be finished in probably maybe an hour, hour and a half at the most. This here is about 30 
square feet to do this. And I have like five or six little pieces, five or six full pieces left over. The reason I didn't go down any further is because our mattress is going to be there and you're not going to be able to see all that. And I just didn't want to waste this pretty wood hidden. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. The next thing we'll be doing probably will be putting up the blinds and installing the lights. If you want to keep seeing cool videos like this, you need to hit that subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed this project. Thanks, Rockin' Wood. Till next time, like and subscribe.